Welcome to another edition of RCE. Again, this is Brock Palin. You can find us online at rce-cast.com. You can find all the old shows, links to our blogs, our Twitters, uh, find old shows, stuff like that on there. Also, I have Jeff Squires on the line, the usual co-host here from OpenMPI in Cisco. Jeff, thanks again for your time. Hey, Brock. This is always good stuff. You know, as usual, this is a uh... An opportunity for us to to learn about some things that we don't normally get exposed to, and sometimes one or or the other of us knows a little bit about the project uh, that we're we're talking to today. And uh, today, I think that's you. You know a bit about our our guest in the project. So why don't you go ahead and introduce him? Our project today is the Atlas Project. Not to be confused with the previous Atlas Project we had on the show that had to do with the Large Hadron Collider. This is the automatically tuned linear algebra suite which is something was one of the very first things I did as a sysadmin was building this once. So our guest is Clint Whaley, who's at the University of Texas at San Antonio. And Clint, why don't you take a moment to introduce yourself? I'm uh, Clint Whaley, the lead developer of Atlas. And that's automatically tuned linear algebra software. Oh, sorry about that. See, this is why we always ask next. <laughs> what is Atlas? <laughs> <laughs> so, automatically tuned linear algebra software. It's a package that uh, attempts to use empirical techniques to auto adapt itself to run very efficiently on uh, any set of hardware um, without, you know, knowing priori what the best techniques are. It tries a bunch of things and picks out the best ones, and produces for you a, t- a highly tuned library of linear algebra uh, kernels mainly something called the BLAS, basic linear algebra subprograms, as well as some routines in LAPAC, uh, linear algebra package. So who should use these routines? What are these routines, and why are they of interest? Well, uh, a whole boatload of people use them without being aware that they use them. Um, linear algebra underlies most of scientific computing uh, I'll get a lot of hate mail for that, but it's roughly true. Uh, most scientific uh, modeling uses either sparse or dense linear algebra, and ATLAS uh, is what helps people with, with the dense linear algebra part. Um, and uh, the ways in which people use them, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of users out there, but most of them don't realize they're using it. For instance, it's built into uh, OS X, Apple's package, where they use linear algebra routines to do spam filtering and some graphics rendering. Those call Atlas underneath. Uh, if you use MATLAB, Maple, Octave, these kind of problem-solving environments, uh, chances are you've used Atlas or one of its proprietary counterparts. It, they link the different executables for different systems. Uh, there's some proprietary packages like MKL, which provide uh, substantially the same features of, as Atlas in a proprietary package. So you've called it, if you've used one of those problem-solving environments, uh, most likely. So what kind of performance do you see for, uh, like, an Atlas routine versus, say, the reference implementation of, like, let's take the normal dense matrix multiply, the classic benchmark that everybody uses? Yeah, for dense uh, linear algebra, if you do a dense matrix multiply of a large size, let's say, and let's call large size 2,000 by 2,000 or larger, something like that, um, then you can expect speed ups that range from factors of three to factors of 100, just depending on your system. Um, to put it in another way, uh, Atlas will often run very near the theoretical peak limit of the machine for a very large square matrix multiply. So, for instance, uh, it's not uncommon to get 90% of theoretical peak with that kind of an operation. So then how much, how much time does it take to hand-tune one of these operations for a single hardware platform if a user was going to do this themselves? Well, um, the problem is it's an indefinite length of time uh, because optimization is never done. So in the past, like, but when Atlas was first beginning, it was very common that Atlas was faster than any proprietary package. But of course, Atlas was, and so what's the reason for that? Well, the proprietary packages didn't have a lot of competition in those days. Intel didn't produce one for the PowerPC, for instance. So IBM's 
only competed against themselves. So when Atlas came along, you can't lose to a free piece of software. And the people hand-tuning realized, oh, there's more hand-tuning to be done. And so then they would improve even further. So how long it takes widely varies depending on the platform. And when do you call it quits? Unless you have some reason to know there's more to be achieved, people often give up long before they reach good performance. But in the past, when, a hard, when hardware would come out, it might take as much as a month before an optimized version was, uh, was finalized. So it could take quite a long time to tune these uh, routines. Now, what kind of optimizations and tunings do you do? I mean, what do you do that that makes these operations so fast other than, uh, you know, the, the canonical three-line matrix, matrix, multiply that you see in textbooks? I mean, why, why does that take so long, and, and how do you do it better? Well, the gateway optimization for all of lin dense linear algebra is blocking, or if you're in the compiler community, you call that tiling, where you basically break the problem up into smaller problems that will fit into the cache. And the reason, of course, is everyone knows because of architecture, um, memories are hundreds of thousands of times slower than processors effectively now. So most operations, including the, the normal three-loop implementation of matrix multiply, run at the speed of memory, which is much, much slower than the speed of the processor. So you first block them, and until you block the operation, no other, no other optimization matters. It doesn't matter whether you... Uh, do loop unrolling or anything else because you're running at the speed of memory regardless. Once you've done blocking, now now you can run, now your theoretical peak is, is being held down by the speed of your computational performance. And that means there's a whole host of now optimizations you have to apply. Loop unrolling, unroll and jam, register block, um, uh, um, instruction scheduling, all these kinds of operations that become important only after you've removed the memory bottleneck. And so Atlas does all of those things, and it does them in several phases, uh, depending on also on their different routines we're talking about. Uh, and I can go into more detail if you'd like to, uh, to know more about that. Sure, I'd, I'd love to hear more. So, for example, what, uh, what is this whole automatically part of, of your name? So, I mean, how are you different, for example, than Intel's MKL, other than, uh, than just being free? Right. So um, the answer is we're not as much different as we used to be, but it's because they've become more like me rather than the reverse. Uh, if you talk, so, you know, originally you had the proprietary people did mostly hand tuning. You know, they had teams of very good, you know, usually assembly programmers who would do all the optimizations that I just briefly outlined. Um, but when I talk to the Intel guys now, they all use a lot of empirical techniques. So for instance, one Intel uh, engineer described to me, like one of the issues you have is to try to find out the best scheduling for all the instructions and the X80, at the assembly level. And the x86 assembly is old and it has a lot of tricks in it. There are you know, maybe 10 different ways to do the same operation. And so what they actually have now, according to, to this engineer, is when they come out with a new chip, instead of trying to hand tune and find what the best assembly sequence is, they have a big generator that generates basically, you can think of it as a massive supercompiler. And they run for weeks to find the exact sequence of instructions that will drive that hardware at its peak rate. Now that's a level of empirical tuning that Atlas just doesn't have because I can't concentrate that much on just one machine like they can. But that shows you the power of the empirical techniques that I think, I'm guessing, almost all the big vendors now use something similar. So I think most people are empirical these days uh, in an automated way. So what kind of things are you looking for? Are you looking for cache size, number of floating point units, uh, availability of vector instructions? What, what are some of the things you're looking for? Right. So... Um, the, as I said, the most important thing that Atlas does first is it tries to find a good blocking factor. And in, in order to do that, it probes for your L1 cache size. Now, Atlas blocks for the level one cache primarily, uh, does multiple levels of blocking, but uh, our first level of blocking is L1. 